it's Charmaine aka Joyelle and welcome back to my channel. So today I am finally, finally doing the hair porosity test on my hair. These last few months have been so stressful to be completely honest. Like taking the hair porosity test in general is just going to help you figure out what products you need on your hair, how you're going to get that moisture into your hair, how to take care of it, what, what it really needs. And honestly, I know that there's a lot of confusion a lot of times with, um, you know, curl type. And, you know, curl type doesn't really, from the research that I've done, your curl type doesn't really matter when it comes to the health of your hair, to your hair care regimen. It, it'll identify your curl pattern, but it doesn't really tell you how to take care of your hair or what it needs. So today that's what we're gonna be doing, but before we get started, you guys already know the drill. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Also, don't forget to click that little bell notification so you guys know every time that I upload. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. I also wanted to note that I am filming in my bedroom a lot lately because we are currently trying to rearrange our computer room or our study so that, um, I can use more of the direct sunlight in my direction, um, or at least on my side of the room, so just bear with me until we're able to get that all solved. We have to move like all of Tyler's like computer stuff and his like 3D printers and whatnot, so it takes a little bit. So what is hair porosity? Hair porosity just simply refers to your hair's ability to absorb and retain moisture. And so with that, there are three types. You have low porosity, normal porosity, and high porosity. So with low hair porosity, it just means that you have hair that has very tightly bound cuticles that lay flat and it makes it really hard for water to get in, but once it does, it takes forever to dry. Like literally like all day. Sometimes it can take a couple days, it just depends. <laughs> and so then, you know, high porosity would be the opposite of that. It's where the cuticles are very open, which means while they can absorb a lot of moisture quickly and a lot of products and you don't tend to see it build up, it also loses that moisture very, very easily. So then, you know, with normal hair porosity, I'm sure you can assume that just means somewhere in the middle where, you know, it gets wet, but it doesn't dry out too quickly. Basically, the best of both worlds, right? So before I did this, I've kind of, after doing some research on the internet and kind of looking up the whole porosity, you know, shindig, I thought it was pretty safe to assume that I had low porosity hair. Other signs of low porosity is just your products just don't soak into your hair. So for me, I've noticed like, for example, I was using the Shea Moisture Coconut Hibiscus uh, leave-in conditioner. Every time I used it, didn't matter how little or how much or how much I worked it in, it literally looks like someone just went with snow all over my head. It was ridiculous and it would take sometimes all day or sometimes it would just never fully absorb into my hair. And it was very frustrating, and I, that's why I said these first couple of months with uh, dealing with my natural hair has been a little stressful because, you know, not knowing that, you're just like, I'm putting things on it that people are telling me to, and my hair is just not taking it, and this is really annoying. Another thing that I noticed is that it takes forever to get my hair actually saturated. I have to stand under the shower, and I have to use really hot water to do that. Another thing is with low hair, uh, with low porosity, it responds very well to warm water or just heat in general. So tip for you low porosity ladies, use hot water when you or warm water when you are rinsing your hair. It'll allow your hair cuticle to open up more, allows it to get that moisture in there, and it'll also allow you know any other products to get into your hair. One of the most popular <laughs> methods of testing your hair porosity is the water method or the uh, or the water test, where basically you take a cup of water and you leave it out so it becomes room temperature. You are supposed to completely clarify your hair. That's the other thing. Please don't do this if you have not yet washed your hair or fully clarified it because any oils that are on it is going to keep anything from soaking in there or it's just not going to give you um, reliable results because you'll have that buildup on there that's kind of blocking for the water from getting in or out or, you know, allowing your hair to actually be tested the way that it should be. So how does the water test work? So first off, you start off with a cup of room temperature water. So what I did is I decided to take a glass of water and I let it sit out for probably about two to four hours. I wanted to make sure it was actually like room temperature water. Um, and I highly recommend not starting with like you know, already hot water, already like iced water because it's just gonna take way longer. Just go to your sink, fill it up with some water and just let it sit in in your bedroom, in your living room, in the kitchen, anywhere just for a couple hours to allow it to get to be room temperature. 
after that, I jumped in the shower to cleanse my hair. Uh, I decided to just shampoo it with my Shea Moisture shampoo, which by the way, Shea Moisture is totally canceled. Only reason I'm still using it is because I'm broke and I can't afford another shampoo. <laughs> Shea Moisture's canceled. We can go into that in, in another video. But I used my Shea Moisture shampoo, and then after washing my hair with that uh, thoroughly, I went ahead and used the Indian Aztec Healing Clay to further clarify my hair. Again, clarifying your hair is like the biggest step you can do during this test to make sure that you're actually testing your hair correctly. So I left it on my hair for 30 minutes and then I rinsed all of that out. Once I rinsed that out, don't condition your hair. Don't condition it. Just cut a few strands off right then and there is what I did. I cut a few pieces off and then I went and I let it air dry for probably about an hour or two. It's just a little piece of hair. So it's, you know, it's not going to take, you know, an all day for just that little piece of hair to dry. Then once you have your pieces of hair, what you do is you, I pulled it apart. I didn't want it to sit in clumps. I wanted, you know, I had a few clumps and then I had a few individual hairs spread out throughout the water. And what you do is you're supposed to leave it for about two to four minutes because I'm extra, I did it for like five or six. But, <laughs> and what happens is if your hair floats, this is a sign of low porosity because again, the cuticles on your hair are very tightly bound and it makes it hard for water to get in, therefore it floats. If your hair is normal porosity, it'll float somewhere in the middle of the cup. So it'll be still, it'll be engulfed in the water, but it'll still be kind of like floating in the middle. And then what the hair, And then with high porosity hair types, you'll notice that the hair will fall or sink to the bottom of the cup. Again, because the cuticles are open, it allows all that water to get in and weigh it down. And lo and behold, mine floated. That hair floated like its life depended on it. And I knew it from the get go. I was like, probably didn't even have to take this test to really know, but it was good to take it and be like, just be reassured that, okay, I really do have this low porosity hair and I've had other signs that have pointed towards that. Again, with the product buildup on my hair, my hair's inability to really handle a lot of products at one time. Um, I've also done a ton of research that with low hair porosity, it's best to maybe skip the LOCO method or the LOC or LCO, and it's best to just stick with an LC or an LO, which I have been doing, and it has completely, completely changed my entire hair routine and how I do my hair and how, and I don't even know how to explain it. So before I was using things, I would use grapeseed oil, shea butter, uh, I, I would try a leave-in and it was just like, it just, my hair felt so heavy, but it still felt so dry. It was, in, it was insane and it was very frustrating because I was like, I'm doing everything that the internet is telling me <laughs> and it's still not working for me. And I was so scared that this was gonna be so detrimental to my big top journey and that you know I was gonna end up hurting my hair again. So again, with low hair porosity, you wanna use warm water. That has also been a major game changer in my hair. So every morning I get in the shower, even though I hate the hot water on my skin because it burns like a mother, it my hair just, you can literally, you can literally tell it just becomes saturated so much quicker and I can tell my hair is just absorbing things much easier than it is when I use a cooler water temperature. I've also noticed that uh, just by using the water and then using um, argon oil, which has been my favorite oil so far, by far, or just using the water and uh, the shea butter, my hair responds so well. It feels moisturized, it doesn't feel weighed down, it doesn't even feel greasy. It's, in it's insane, like that's what I did this morning. I've been using just the shea butter because I ran out of argon oil and I'm broke and I just want to use up my stuff. But yeah, doing this test has also made me realize how important it is to maybe invest in a hair steamer or a steaming cap or something like that. Uh, I currently don't steam or use any heat on my hair besides just the hot water. Um, and I probably need to start investing in that and doing like a deep conditioning treatment once a week. <laughs> uh, God, I can already feel all the roast comments coming on. Like, girl, what are you doing? You're neglecting it already, Jesus. But yeah, that is my next goal to do, is to start looking into, you know, a hooded dryer or just something cheapy. It doesn't even have to be expensive. I saw a couple of these, like, they're like these little heat caps. It's like a nightcap with like a towel in it. And you can like microwave it and like put it on your head and it works essentially the same way as just, 
you know, using heat on your hair. So I thought that was cool, so I might invest into that. Every day is a journey with this hair and I don't regret it. I love my hair, honestly, love my hair. I feel so much happier, I feel so much more confident. My scalp doesn't itch anymore, it's amazing. Um, I highly, I highly recommend putting in the research to find out your hair's porosity because it'll literally change your entire hair routine. It'll open up, I think, I think it'll help relieve a lot of, um, frustration when it comes to trying to figure out what your hair needs. It sure is, sure as heck helped me. I don't know why I didn't look into this when I first big chopped, but you know, like we said, it's a journey for a reason. I'm getting to know my hair and figure out what it needs. And what I hope is that with this video and learning about your hair porosity, it will kind of help girls who are feeling stuck and frustrated with their hair and like, and who feel kind of overwhelmed with the amount of information that's on the internet. I'm not gonna lie, it is very overwhelming and that's because not everything works for everybody. And so everybody has their own way of doing things and everyone's just trying to share it. But really you need to just kind of take the time, invest that time into your hair to figure out what it needs to really flourish, to bloom. <laughs> but before we end this video, I also want to take a moment to announce my new Facebook group. It is the Natural Hair Type 4 beauty group on Facebook that I just made. Um, I have the Korean beauty review, which is for my Korean skincare enthusiasts. And then I also was motivated and encouraged to start a natural hair group for those with type four hair. I'll link it down below for you guys. It's super brand new and there's literally like nothing in there right now, but I would love to have you guys join. Once you're approved, you know, make a post, you know, take a, you know, post a selfie about you, tell me about your hair, you know, start posting your tips. I'm looking to build, you know, another hair community where those with, you know, type 4 hair or who have gone natural have a safe place to, you know, provide tips or ask questions, give advice, share products, and just really build a community where you feel, um, where you really are appreciated and your hair is appreciated, your beauty is appreciated. But yeah, with that said, you know, don't forget to check that out, you guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.